All right. A lot of people seem to want to know how to get a charger to just put out more juice. I mean, I guess people want to be able to charge a battery, like, super fast, just as fast as a conventional battery charger would do it, like, on the 10-amp setting. Um, which, I guess, logically, use a 10-amp charger if you want that uh, to be the case. But at the same time, I mean, um, if you want to use a pulse motor, which I can understand why, just because it's freaking cool, then um, the most lo the next most logical choice would be shoot. You know, use thicker wire. Everybody says that. Or an easier thing is just use more coils in parallel. Um, and I guess I just wanted to give an example of that. This is just a little pulse motor that I made using the reed switch, which basically is just serving as a mechanical oscillator. I don't have to worry about finding a uh, resistance to get two coils to oscillate for a charge. It was just a little rotor set up. Make sure that I have a uh, switching. And basically, in that situation, you can just take a drive coil, which is this right here, transformer, which is pretty efficient because it's got the core and the E core in it. And you can just add more coils to that in parallel. I mean, you don't have to have them facing around your rotor. Or, you know, I mean, if you're just worried about charging, just add more freaking coils. You just place them on the board somewhere. Here's an additional coil that I added in parallel. It's a pretty badass uh, transformer, audio transformer. So it's got a primary and secondary. But I basically just added that in parallel. And what I found was interesting is by doing that, it actually increased the speed of the uh, rotor, which doesn't really make sense to me, but that's what it did. And uh, this particular coil... When I add it in parallel, of course, it's firing. It's not helping the rotor, but it's firing. So more juice is going through the transistor, and I have more juice coming from the output. But at the same time, the secondary on this thing is um, was kicking out pretty serious voltage. The uh, the art that I could make was literally like, you know, it almost killed me. So I ran that through a bridge rectifier, which is also going to my output. So I basically got... The spikes coming from the uh, transistor for my first coil, in addition to the spikes coming from my second coil in parallel, in addition to the spikes coming from the secondary on the second coil, which is pretty serious. <coughs> so I guess you can just I'm gonna just show that more beefier charge. Cut it on. Motor's going. That's a 12 volt charge battery that uh, is charging. Maybe you can. I don't know if you can see that. Jewel Thief Light. Go, go, Gadget. Jewel Thief Light. Now, anyway, but just so you can see the idea of uh, the intensity of this output, I'm just take the uh, take the battery off. So there, yeah, you can see um, lights are fluorescent, pretty nice. Another thing that I thought was pretty interesting is check this out. I'm just gonna unhook the charge. This is the, this is my charge right here. Putting a uh, loading the coil with this one of these bulbs actually loads it less than the CFL. So maybe I can show that. So watch, watch what happens. Motor goes faster. Hey. So yeah, you can you can get an idea of um how how serious that must charge and rejuvenate a battery. And it was I'm using a twelve volt adapter that can probably kick out two amps at most. But what I'm getting on the receiving end is is enough to charge a battery. I'll probably fully charge a car battery in um less than eight hours. I think that's pretty decent. So there you have it. And once again everything I make is really unorganized. But it's, it was free. So can you argue with that? I didn't think so. Thanks for watching.